<sighs> oh, goodness, goodness gracious. As you can see. Yeah. So, we're back after that trip. So, obviously, after all the exclusive footage you guys have been seeing of Sparking Zero, I think it's time for a review video. And you can tell I can give a review video. So this year I decided to fly out to California and get my first hand experience of Spark and Zero. So we went to Anime Expo at the Bandai Namco booth and it was a great time. Honestly, it was a great time. Uh, definitely an experience to remember, especially being able to meet Dada Doya, Riku the Best, Minato's Flash. So it was very unique that, you know, something specific that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Uh, but before jumping into positives and negatives of, of this game, if you want to continue seeing Sparking Zero content on this channel, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel, guys. Uh, it's a huge thing, especially with how YouTube is. They just want to keep pushing out videos that have a lot of likes, a lot of comments, and all that good stuff. So just make sure, comment down below what you guys think of the exclusive gameplay that I've been showing so far. And of course, with today's review video, as you can see, all these medals, uh, hopefully, hopefully it'll be a good one for you guys to uh, enjoy as well. So uh, stick around. Get some popcorn, whatever you can. Uh, and yeah, let's talk about this game. My first time ever playing this game, I was hoping that the mechanics were similar to Budokai Tenkaichi 3, but in a more modern style. To my happiness, I quickly adapted to Spark and Zero primarily due to already knowing the controls from the previous games. We are first greeted with both the standard and the classic control menu that you get to choose which way you want to play. Now right off the bat, I dove straight into classic because it is exactly what I remembered from my childhood. You are currently seeing my first attempt at playing Spark and Zero, so please cut me some slack as I was still getting used to that different feeling. What really struck me was how intelligent the CPU was as we went head to head with many characters in that demo. I would like to say that even with how great I got at the game, there were many times where I even ran out of time against the CPU because they were literally fighting back. I believe that is a great thing because that gives us a challenge, especially for training mode. Now I could go on forever and ever on the graphics and the visuals of the game. But I want to keep that discussion short as I already fell in love with how vibrant the colors were. I want to focus on the question that was constantly asked of me, and that is, how was the gameplay? Well, to answer that, I can probably say that Spark and Zero played very well. The only negative aspect of this demo was the unfortunate events of possible overheating occurring to the PS5s due to the terrible ventilations that were at that booth. Now, I want to truly believe that is the case, but from my own experience, that didn't seem like the cause of the lag in the frame drops that I was actually noticing quite frequently. Now after the staff rebooted the game on their PS5s, the game did eventually run really smoothly. With the game running how it should be, it was finally time to lock in and understand all the bells and whistles that we call mechanics. Movement felt very similar to Tenkaichi 3, except the new mechanic added was the short dashes that you are seeing right here. I personally thought the short dashes were helpful in mid to close range fighting because it allows you to position yourself in the range to quickly step into the opponent and try to start a combo. The best part about the short dashes is that you can evade key blasts such as Dodon Rays or Kamehameha Waves without having to take any damage straight on or by blocking the attack. My favorite movement mechanic is the Z Burst Dash. This was previously in Budokai Tenkaichi 3 as you can see here and I feel like this will be a great way to balance out the game in terms of movement because there are mo moments in the previous Tenkaichi games where you can get stuck in an endless loop of homing dash attacks but I did not notice the same in Sparking Zero. A few of the mechanics that are back are the side stepping and the step in movement. With combos, the best approach is to do a step in motion to cancel out your combo chain so that you can start a new one. In terms of a sidestep, this can be very helpful for also cancelling out a combo chain and resetting it. There are many ways to play a fighting game that specifically focuses on combos, so I feel that you will play this game differently than me, so once you have your hands on the game, I think it will be best for you to try it yourself and see how you can combo chain the way you want to. One of the things that I did notice during my rewatch of my gameplay is that when you look at your stock and look at the or gauge if anyone looks at it differently. When you do take damage or if you do deflect any kind of key blast or if it's a beam, you will get a big boost in your gauge quicker. So that could be a big advantage, especially if you're trying to get your ultimates out or your supers or whatever the case may be as quickly as possible. Or if you want to transform into, you know, Super Saiyan Blue or whatever different transformations you get. So you can see right here that there is a big boost that happens when I am deflecting Birder's key right here. 
So I guess the obvious one that I wanted to bring up is the sparking mode. So as you can see, when I'm using Android 18, the sparking mode was kind of a unique thing to use. And of course the combinations is gonna continue on. And to be honest with you, I was literally just spamming square here and it just kept doing the same thing over and over again. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. One of the things about the sparking mode, of course, is you're trying to get your ultimate out. So I don't know if they're in the case it's worth using your ultimate at that point, or you could just literally combo like that and spam score until your you know full sparking mode is gone. So I don't know that one of the things I didn't like about that it was endless. So I don't really think that's the best thing for this game. And I'm not sure if you can actually get out of it, but in the end of the day, some characters will just feel completely different based on who you're using, such as the androids where they don't have any key at all, or if their ultimate is going to be a rush ultimate, then of course you're going to want to use them, especially with how sparking mode works, where you can combo up and then end it off with their ultimate before you run out of full ultimate bar. Now with Super Saiyan 3 Goku vs Majin Buu, I had to go canon because it's just so amazing and beautiful in this game. But one thing I didn't like was the clashing in this game. I just didn't understand it really. Uh, they don't explain it the best. It just seems like you're just spinning the Joy-Con and that's pretty much it. At the end of the day, that's pretty much how it was in the older games as well. But in this, it's a little more flashy. So that's one of the things I did not like. Maybe once we have the game itself, we'll have more explanations from the instructions and stuff like that. And in the previous games, one of the things I loved about it is when you did a Z-Burst Dash or when you're doing a Smash Attack, you can follow up with the Z-Burst Dash behind the character to stop them into a combo. Unfortunately, right there, you can see it did not work. So one of the things I do want them to fix is that because that is one of the things that pro players have actually commented on my videos and brought that up because that's a huge thing that they did in the comp scene. Now if you're a visual learner I went ahead and booted up BT3 so you can see what I mean by the dash. So this right there is what was happening in Spark and Zero but when I actually show you what you can do in BT3 this right there is what I was actually trying to do and unfortunately it was not working in Spark and Zero so I'm not sure if they're going to fix that or if that's something they are even looking into but you'll see again I'll do it one more time just so you guys can see what I mean that dash right there can actually stop the opponent. Switching back to Spark and Zero, you're going to see me beat the living dog waters out of Majin Buu now. But I just want to say that the game so far really felt amazing. I had no complaints, really. I, I just want to keep playing. This game is amazing. The colors are great. The moves are amazing. Some of the things they can't work on, and I'm pretty sure they've already fixed it. But going forward, there's a lot more that I do want to talk about once I get my hands on the game again at EVO because I will be playing at EVO. And unfortunately, I won't have as much content there because there's just so many people that will be going uh, to EVO. So we'll see. Now, I did want to discuss one thing, and this is the one more disappointing part about the game, and it is the Super Saiyan 3 Dragon Fist that you can do on big characters in BT3. Unfortunately, you will see in here, I did try to do this in Sparking Zero, and Goku really just bounced off. You know, you'll see right here, and it sucks. It really does suck. You know, that's one of the biggest mechanics in BT3 that worked on Giants. Super Saiyan 3 Goku's Dragon Fist was always the exception to that. So not being able to see that in Sparking Zero was a big concerning thing to me. So that kind of tells me that the characters that we're hoping for, such as Harutagarn and maybe other big characters, won't be in the game because unfortunately... The, work, the move doesn't work and now I do want to think that maybe they haven't really implemented it in the game just yet because of the camera angles but I'm still a little worried on that because the game does come out very soon literally in two three months so it's one of the worries I have and hopefully they did think about that and will implement it in the actual game now before I wrap up today's video I do want to say that the one thing that's been on my mind is the balancing of the game they have already said the developers have already said that the game itself will not be as balanced as you guys think because in Dragon Ball, it's all about power. You want to use the strongest characters against the weakest characters? By all means, do it. That is the best part about that and I want that to keep it true to what they say because I want to be able to use Super Saiyan Blue Goku versus Krillin and be able to just beat the living dog waters out of him. So I hope that they keep that true. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Me personally, I'm cool with that. It's not supposed to be a very competitive game at all, but if people want to focus on that, then we can create our own community for the competitive scene for Spark and Zero. 
you guys let me know what you guys think that is a big thing for someone to take on the role for that but i am completely okay with seeing that in this community now you've seen all my footage i've recorded during my time at anime expo it wasn't direct footage but i did what i could with what i had Thank you to Bandai Namco for allowing us to record all the gameplay at their booth and hopefully next time I can get the opportunity to record direct footage and for that to happen I need the support from you guys by subscribing to the channel, liking this video, and sharing this review across all social medias so that we can continue growing. There's more Spark and Zero coming to the channel even after the release of the game, but for now I will be flying out to conventions in the near future to record more footage for you guys. This is all for this review video, and I know all my gameplay and maybe even this review video will be spreading around Twitter and YouTube. All I ask is please credit me when you do and send people back to the original source because that will help me a lot for my own growth. Anime Expo is a great time. I want to continue bringing content to you guys, so stick around and I'll see you guys very soon.